Hi, I'm Dan Whittaker. I'm here today to talk to you about one of the often most misunderstood parts of the golf swing, the first move, in terms of taking the club back and how the club should be taken back, started in motion and then the elements of setting the golf club to halfway back, making sure that the golf club is moving in sync with the body. Now, I very often uh, hear a lot of different interpretations of what's happening during the backswing. People will think about the hand setting early um, with a fairly quick set, and um, they'll talk about how what a one piece move might be, but then they'll think about rotating that left arm very quickly. And, and they'll, people think about how simple a backswing can be by just simply rotating the left arm and letting the right elbow fold or other people may um, like to let the left wrist cock a lot more. Some people may feel it happen from the right elbow. A lot of these ways that people feel their backswing happens can be correct for their golf swing, but it's understanding what elements work for you and in your game. Now, to start off with, the first thing you have to understand is that the golf club has got to move back in one piece. So in other words, the body turn will start the club back. So as the body turn starts back in one piece here, the club will simply be an extension of the belly button here. Now as the club remains as an extension of the belly button to that point, it means that it will always point back down to um, an extension point of the ball to target line. Now, an extension point of the ball to target line here on the ground is, uh, is done by this golf shaft. This is seen as the base of the plane line as um, done in uh, TGM terms. And I think this is a great way of uh, expressing what the swing plane is going to be. Now if we had um, an extension point coming out of the end of the golf shaft right here, so um, through the hose or through the golf shaft should I say, it would be pointing back to this base of the plane line. From the address position there, we'd then start turning the body away in one piece. Okay, and you'd see how the butt of the club is moving in towards the right thigh, as uh, seen from down the line here. You see that the club's actually moving inwards. Now this is actually an optical illusion, because yes, it looks like the club's moving inwards, yet, when we have a look from the front view, We'll notice that as I start turning back, it's just an extension of my body. Okay, so the club hasn't shortened and gone nearer, it just means that everything has worked away in a circle. So, when seen from down the line, the hands appear to work inwards. What this also does is it means that the angle in my left wrist has remained exactly the same as it was at the dress. If anything, for a lot of golfers, this wants to slightly increase. Now this goes back to the first move used by the likes of Ben Hogan and Byron Nelson back in their day and is actually used by the likes of Jason Duffner right now. Now what you'll notice is when I put this little weight behind the club head right here, this is only a two kilo disc, what you'd find is that from my address position here, once I start turning the body away, the, um, the resistance from the weight allows that angle to be increased there, you see this? So the body starts to turn and the resistance from the weight means that the club head is going back very much in one piece here. So the club is just as an extension of the centre point of my body, which is my belly button. Now, that's your classic one piece move. So this can be um, utilised by using a towel attached to the club head, a weight behind it, or even putting the golf club into the belly button right here so that as the turn starts back the hands stay the same distance from the body they started and we know that everything has moved away together paced by the body turn when i say paced i'm meaning that as that turn starts it's what moves all the other elements of the body so they're moving in a sequence now once we have that first move correct right here as an extension of the body from the butt of the club and the other end of the golf club is pointing back to that base of the playing line. From here, what we will notice is that left arm begins to rotate 
that left wrist will cock and that right elbow will have folded down. The golf club at this point now is the butt is pointing back to the base of the plane line. The club will have moved up slowly through my forearm and then in through the middle of my bicep here. Okay? And the butt of the club is back to that base of the plane line. Now you will also notice that the centre point of the hand and the centre point of the body, which is where my sternum is, so the zip on the sweater here, and the centre of the hand are completely together. This is showing that this is a very synced up and back, so that everything is moving away together. My arms are in front of my body. Now, some people may want to feel that from this halfway back position here, that they feel a lot, or from this first move here where they start to get the goal for moving, some people may feel a lot more wrist cock. Some guys may feel a lot more left arm rotation, okay? Some people may feel more right elbow fold. Now, those feelings are all tend to be for guys with particular problems. So if I've got a student in front of me who is taking the club back and he tends to suck it inside a little bit early, he's going to work very well at trying to lag the golf club and then feel more left wrist cock. So the club's going to feel a lot more vertical and more upright to him. And maybe even feeling that the golf club gets a little bit more on its end. It never does truly get on its end, it's more at an angle here, so it's pointing back to that base of the plane line. Somebody who picks it up very early here will benefit much more from rotating the left forearm and feeling that the shaft shallows a lot more. But you can see there, two people with two very different problems in terms of takeaway will therefore get into the same on-plane position but via very different avenues. So it's how you're going to plot your way with your golf swing to help you overcome your natural tendencies. That's therefore then going to get you into the position where the golf club is on plane. Now, one of the biggest keys to it all is understanding that as the body turn starts back, the club reacts. So the body turn will start, the club head will lag, then the golf club will set. Now, once you've got the idea of the swing plane right at halfway back, simply just a case of stretching that left shoulder across over the inside of the right thigh so that you can stretch this left lat out. Okay? We'll go more on from what the second part of the backswing is in a later video for you in terms of the extension of the plane. But getting the idea of where the golf club is, bang on plane, halfway back right here, okay? Once you've got the feel for it, doing the exercise of the belly button, maybe even having the weight behind so that you can really start to incorporate the lagging drill, okay? And you're getting the club head staying outside the hands a long time then want to incorporate it by hitting some golf shots. Now, in terms of doing that, you want to then do some very slow motion hitting drills. Doing it at something like 20% of your normal speed. There is a big reason behind this fact. And that's because most of us tend to snatch the club away, take it back into our original positions, either picking it up or dragging it to inside very violently and much too aggressively. What we're wanting to do is to be able to incorporate the new moves to the case of making the golf swing as slow as you can so you can feel all the elements of the backswing coming together. So that you can feel how the body turn starts, the club lags, the left wrist will cock, then the club can be brought through via a weight transfer from the lower body starting first, because you'll get over that front pivot point, then unwinding around. Now the speed of that backswing now is very, very slow. It wants to be as slow as you can so that you can actually place the golf club into the ideal positions and so you are fully aware of where the club is at all times. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you'd like to uh, contact me or see more of my stuff you can do at my website at golf.com or you can email me at dan at golf.com. Thanks a lot.